Hello, everyone. Uh, it's great to have you all here. My name is Artem Andreev. I'm a product manager for Marantis. Uh, Marantis specifically OpenStack line of products that includes all the known existing distributions of OpenStack we ever did or we ever going to do. And today I would like to talk to you uh, about our new launch that is just about to happen in a matter of several weeks. And this is Marantis OpenStack on Kubernetes, our new next generation OpenStack distribution. So I would like to highlight a few uh, topics that, or questions that you might probably have. First, well, why uh, Marantis is building a new distribution? Why do we need it? What's wrong with those that are currently there? What exactly is Marantis OpenStack on Kubernetes? What, what's going to be a part of the package? What's going to be not going to be there as of today, as of the tomorrow? And well, how exactly Marantis OpenStack on Kubernetes works? What's, what's, what's on the inside, on the architecture and things moving together? How, how exactly Marantis is solving OpenStack uh, management complexity with the help of Kubernetes? Let's start. So why, why Marantis OpenStack on Kubernetes? Why do we need another distribution? So, well, Marantis has a long history of uh, deploying and managing OpenStack. And we'll, over these past years, we've learned a lot. So we uh, realized that, well, some of the more, some of the requirements that modern, uh, customers for Outlast they have, they're quite hard to uh, implement, and hard to provide with our uh, current product lines, with our current technology. And while well, these are actual requirements much higher than they used to be, so the, the expectations of the market are growing and we need to move along with these requirements to just to sustain our OpenStack business. So what we want to achieve with Mirage's OpenStack on Kubernetes is first, uh, reliability and robustness as well. Well, this is important, especially in some areas like telco, which, well, they do not forgive you any downtimes. Like it's a second, a minute downtime means a loss of thousands of dollars. Security and transparency. This is very important for uh, those customers who operate in highly regulated areas. Uh, having a lot of uh, having to comply with a lot of standards and um, governance around uh, data placement, data uh, transparency of the infrastructure, and well, uh, compliance with, of course, more uh, standards for encryption and well, data protection. Uh, on the other hand, the distribution needs to be simple and easy to deploy and operate because, well, you don't have to, as a cloud operator, don't have to read a thousand books before actually doing something. It should be intuitive. And well, naturally, one of the biggest challenges we uh, recognize with OpenStack is that, well, sometimes uh, our customers are quite reluctant to update just because, well, they believe that the updates and upgrades are complex and are impactful on their workloads. And well, that introduces a lot of interesting situations uh, like when, well, we have to patch a very, very old code base and somehow deliver that to the field. And of course, uh, well, if we want to compete with the public clouds, well, the, there needs to be some level of feature parity in between what public cloud providers offer and what OpenStack, our OpenStack can do. So right is OpenStack on Kubernetes. The launch is on November the 4th. So the initial general availability version is going to contain uh, the core set of services uh, like standard set, identity management, images, virtualization, block storage, networking, horizon, uh, orchestration. Well, but uh, of course there's uh, some extras like bare metal management service, DNS as a service, uh, still meter for metering of the and uh, auto scale on the workloads, management of secrets, and load balancing through Octavia. And all this mix is augmented with a uh, Marantis know how 
subsystems that provide ability for operators to manage the their infrastructure full stack from the very bottom of the hardware to the very top of the software. Of course, uh, operations support system, quite well known around to stack light, logging, uh, monitoring, alerting, also containerized. Oh, naturally, um, hmm, zero touch uh, day two operations capability. So meaning that, well, uh, adding a node, removing a node, changing configuration is a matter of one or two API calls and not a thousand manual actions. And of course, continuous and seamless updates to the OpenStack installation in the field, meaning that applying new code sh should not be a matter of hours, but rather minutes and should, should not have any impact on the running workloads. And we will be achieving that from the very beginning, from the very first version of Marantis OpenStack. And by the way, um, it's going to be OpenStack Usuri uh, release. So quite quite new, quite stable by that time. Okay, so how exactly Marantis is doing that? So how are we exactly deploying and running OpenStack on top of Kubernetes? So, and we achieved that through the uh, integration with our um, new line of products we call it docker enterprise container cloud this is a kubernetes as a service distribution and tool set around it so on which openstack relies just like any other typical kubernetes workloads relies to manage and control the underlying infrastructure hardware host operating system well naturally the kubernetes underlay kubernetes cluster itself add-ons to this Kubernetes cluster? Well, yes. And well, the, we as open developers for OpenStack, will we, we rely on these capabilities that Kubernetes provides us with, and we'll just deploy it and manage it just like any other Kubernetes workload. So yeah. However, on the uh, packaging side, we uh, not only ship OpenStack as it is, just as before with our previous products, but also containerized SAP as a major backend for storage. Naturally, containerized Stacklight to do mon login monitoring and alerting, and uh, two software defined networking solutions, open based on open with switch, classic company, classic architecture, and containerized tungsten fabric. Uh, and well, Docker Enterprise Container Cloud solves uh, managing solves the, the tasks of managing uh, all of this stack and actually can do a bit more by, for example, allow you to deploy, to give your uh, custom users ability to deploy their own small Docker Enterprise Kubernetes clusters on top of your open containerized open stack. Okay, how does the deployment uh, and management um, look like in terms of from the operator perspective? First. Well, Docker Enterprise Container Cloud takes care of the provisioning of the infrastructure for the data special bare metal management system. So all the uh, host OS provisioning, all the host OS configuration, discovery of the nodes, et cetera, et cetera, it's all handled through, uh, through this mechanism. Then the next step is to deploy a Kubernetes cluster on top of that. So essentially, everything is running on top of Kubernetes. All any component you can think of, which is in a user space of the host OS, is a container, right? So we install Kubernetes cluster. We install add-ons, uh, necessary add-ons like operators, uh, and we implement lifecycle management for OpenStack and um, su supporting components as Kubernetes operators. So there is a Kubernetes operator for OpenStack, there is a Kubernetes operator for Ceph, and well, that will be at some point a uh, Kubernetes operator for Stacklight. So having these LC lifecycle management modules um, and exposing their um, APIs as a part of the Kubernetes of this Kubernetes cluster API, yeah, an operator creates their uh, corresponding clusters, uh, you providing by means of providing a YAML form definition of what needs to be there. And lifecycle management models handle all the rest of the deployment and management. So changing things 
is actually as easy. So you, you use the same APIs you use to deploy. Basically, you describe what you want to get in the end, and well, Kubernetes handles um, get in there to that desired state. Well, naturally, there are certain pros and cons to, to this approach. Well, someone might say, well, this approach is quite complex. Why do I need that? Well, yes, uh, but managing uh, OpenStack in a classic way through packages for some sort of configuration management is actually as complex. So, and Kubernetes does a great deal of work job to uh, help us achieve self-healing, auto-scaling, for example, through the native Kubernetes way of doing that. Well, isolation of components and libraries is successfully addressed uh, through the means of by means of Docker using Docker images. Rolling updates is our out of the box mechanisms mechanisms for um, Kubernetes workloads. Well, networking building blocks like uh, load balancing as a service, um, and then uh, interconnectivity being between the containers. Well, solves a great deal of job of complexity to manage the uh, huge, vast amount of services that OpenStack has in connecting them together, making them talk together. Well, and as I said, the reconciling mechanism. So operator describes what he wants to get, and the rest is handled through the um, internal mechanisms. Is actually a great contribution to the simplification of the uh, deployment and management process. And we are scaling up um, of control plane is as easy as just uh, provisioning a new node, making it a Kubernetes worker and assigning a label to that. So everything else is automatically handled through um, Kubernetes internal mechanisms that Kubernetes provides. Well, of course, you as an operator, you would have to learn how to deal with all that. But well, since the market is still actually moving towards containerization, uh, very fast, so it would probably be a beneficial benefit. Uh, yes, uh, OpenStack is not a typical, 100% typical Kubernetes workload because it has certain uh, components that are stateful that need to be pinned to certain work nodes. And well, this um, overhead, logical overhead needs to be implemented somewhere. So inside the lifecycle management modules. Yeah, that's true. Well, of course, uh, one would need to take care about uh, allocating a dedicated um, set of resources to run um, Kubernetes control plane so that OpenStack as a workload does not, if for some reason being overloaded, does not affect the ability to operate the underlying Kubernetes cluster that could be leading to disastrous consequences. Uh, long story short, this is what Right as OpenStack and Kubernetes is going to look like, and we are all very excited about it. Well, as a sneak peek, I would like to show you a demo of like one of the most um, powerful and well, exciting capabilities that Right as OpenStack and Kubernetes is going to have. It's the upgrade in between OpenStack releases done within a matter of, well, hours, not days as before, and well, with very minimal app impact on the actually on the on the users. Today, we will upgrade a very small but still featureful OpenStack cluster. We will start the upgrade process and watch the major services getting replaced with the newer versions. After the upgrade is done, we will check if the cluster is still operational. And uh, in the background, there will be a rally job running to collect some statistics about the uh, successful and failed user operations. One more little thing before we start. This demo was created with the help of Lens. Lens is the integrated development environment created specifically for Kubernetes applications. And since we say that OpenStack for us is just another Kubernetes application. This IDE seems to be a great fit for the demonstration purpose. Okay, let's start. Here we have a nine node cluster running the latest Docker Enterprise Kubernetes. On top of it, there is an installation of Mirantis OpenStack on Kubernetes, which has all the major services available. Every user space service is represented by one or more containers that runs under the control of Kubernetes orchestrator. 
Pieces of lifecycle management logic for all of the components, including OpenStack, are implemented in the form of Kubernetes operators. The lifecycle management module for OpenStack is called OpenStack Operator. Let's check which OpenStack release we are currently running. OK, the version of Nova API is 2.60, which represents OpenStack Queens. Let us also check the version of the Nova service itself by means of running a Nova manage version command from inside a container. The version of the Nova service also maps to the Queens release. Let's set up a rally job to simulate some user activity during the upgrade. The job will be starting up and then shutting down box of VMs in cycles. The simulation has now started. Every LCM operator exposes a custom resource in Kubernetes API. OpenStack operator is not an exception to this rule. OpenStack deployment CR is a single point of entry into OpenStack cluster management. The target OpenStack release is specified just as another parameter in the custom resource. Changing this parameter to something different will trigger an upgrade. The upgrade has now started. First, we need to pre-cache all the new images for the containers. This usually takes a while. 20 minutes later, we are ready to proceed with the rolling upgrade itself. The rolling upgrade starts with the Keystone service. While the service is being renewed, let's check if its API is still available. Keystone API is still running on Queen's release. After a while, we can see it has bound to Rocky. Now let us give the OpenStack operator a chance to finish with the Keystone service. The operator reports that the identity service has been successfully upgraded. Now since we are done with Keystone upgrade, let's take a look at plans. Let's check how the process of upgrade affects the end user experience. And let us give it another try after a while. Everything is OK. The dashboard seems to be working. In the meanwhile, the image service has been also upgraded, and now it is time for the networking. Checking the network's dashboard in Horizon to make sure there is no impact on the users. Everything seems to be working fine. The time is running and we are done upgrading the Neutron service. So now it's time for the compute, Nova. We are filtering out the Kubernetes pods that comprise the Nova service and watching them getting upgraded one by one. Let's check the version of the Nova API. 2.60 is still Queens. Let's give the operator a bit of time to complete the upgrade of Nova. Checking the API version again, and, and we see it change to 2.65. This corresponds to Rocky release of OpenStack. And just for the sake of prudency, since we checked this in the beginning of the demo, let us see what Nova manage version command produces as an output. Nova service has been upgraded to version 18.3.1, which is rocky. The operator keeps upgrading the rest of the components in the background. The upgrade normally takes around 2 hours. Since everything is running in parallel, there is no linear dependency on the size of the cluster. After roughly 1 hour, the whole cluster has been upgraded. All of the OpenStack services are now running rocky release. Now let's do a quick health check of the cluster. We'll play with it a bit to see if it's still operational. The compute, volume, images, and networking dashboard seem to be working fine, which is definitely a good sign. 
Now let us try the designate service. We will create a new DNS zone and a record set in it to make sure that designate is still operational. Creating a simple record set. Let's try creating a new volume from an image to see if Cinder and Glance services can work together. We have a set of tenant networks pre-configured and we need to adjust the rules in the default security group to make sure that the incoming SSH and ICMP traffic is allowed. OK, now it's time to launch a new instance and try to log in into it. We will be using the previously created volume to run an instance from it. OK, the instance is up and running, now it's time to associate a new floating IP so that we could access the instance from the outside of the cluster. All set, now it's time to SSH into the guest using the floating IP address previously attached to the instance. And we're in. So, we have proven the OpenStack cluster is fully operational after the upgrade. Now we just need to give Rally a job a bit of time to finish and see the statistics of the execution. The full upgrade has taken roughly 2 hours minus 20-30 minutes for the Rally job to finish with 98.4% of cloud user operations finished successfully. To conclude, we have just seen how Mirantis OpenStack on Kubernetes solves the challenge of upgrading such a complex application like OpenStack using the advanced mechanisms the Kubernetes platform provides. The first release of Mirantis OpenStack on Kubernetes is going to become available on November the 4th. It's going to provide enough functionality for any company to build their own private infrastructure as a service platform. From the very beginning, Mirantis will start delivering continuous updates to the product. A new release will be available every six weeks, with a zero-touch and zero-impact migration path in between the versions. The second release of the product, which is going to become available in the end of the year 2020, is going to support OpenStack Victoria, together with an upgrade path from OpenStack Osuri. That is it. For more information about Mirantis OpenStack and Kubernetes, visit our website info.mirantis.com. Thank you everyone for watching the demo and have a nice day.